Hi everyone, my name is Jill Wesley and welcome to the University vlog. And University is spelled Y-O-U because education is all about what you make it and you have the opportunity to create your own destiny, challenge assumptions, and stretch yourself and accomplish things you never knew were possible. So today I was really trying to think about what would be important to talk about and what would be relevant to everyone in the world. And one thing that came to mind as I opened up my laptop when I got up this morning is my Facebook account. A lot of us go to Facebook bright and early in the morning. And I woke up to find the first message telling me that Nelson Mandela died. And I, I was heartbroken. I felt horrible. However, um, I needed to find out for myself. So I went and I Googled to check to see if that indeed is true, and it is not true. I realize he's 94 years old, and he has had some serious health problems, but for me, it was about making sure that I had the full story. And getting the full story is something that we should all really be looking for, because Facebook, or our circle of friends, or our educational institutions, or our communities, often give us a partial story. And I believe university is all about discovery and challenging assumptions and thinking critically and exploring on our own. And if we operate from a place of curiosity and really looking into things to see what other story may be out there, it's really going to serve us in the future. And I got thinking about Nelson Mandela and his legacy and all the accomplishments that he's been able to achieve in his life. And I had the opportunity in 1997 to go to South Africa. And it was kind of a spur of the moment trip. I was living in uh, South America at the time. I lived in Argentina. And we were planning a trip to Chile. And I went to the travel agency to make the arrangements. And I happened to look on a poster, look up and see a poster. It said South Africa, there was an elephant on it. And it was, I think, $500 to fly from Buenos Aires, Argentina to um, Johannesburg. And coming from California, those tickets were always like $1,500. So I made the instant decision that I needed to go to South Africa. I'd heard about it my whole life. Um, I remember in the 80s, the apartheid movement became really popular in the U.S. and a lot of, you know, um, companies divested from South Africa and musicians refused to play there. And I also remember the song. There was a song call, uh, from the band Special AKA called Free Nelson Mandela. I loved ska music in high school and uh, I remember hearing, you know, free Nelson Mandela. So I got the opportunity to go to South Africa just a few years after um, Nelson Mandela became president and it, it was a really really incredible experience. Aside from you know safari and, and the natural beauty of the country the beauty of the people was really impressive and it challenged my assumptions about how I might be treated in South Africa and what it meant to be um, to have a multicultural background like mine and and be mixed and how I would be received there. Um, you know, you grow up in, in the U.S. and you can get a partial story. There aren't a lot of South Africans in the United States, or there weren't especially um, when I was growing up, and so you just heard that apartheid existed and there was horrible discrimination and mistreatment, and it's, it was pretty easy for people, black or white, to make assumptions about the whites that lived um, in South Africa during apartheid. And what I learned was um, you're never going to know someone else's truth. You're never going to know someone else's experience until you actually engage and you ask curious questions versus making assumptions about how someone operates. And one experience that comes to mind the first day I was in South Africa, I went alone. Um, I was meeting someone over there, but he couldn't get there for another eight or nine days, so I was traveling alone for the first the first chunk of the trip, and um, it was my first day in Johannesburg, and you know I got to my hotel and I figured okay I gotta go get something to eat, and I unfortunately had heard that South Africa and Johannesburg was really dangerous, and I needed to be careful, and I'm a pretty experienced traveler, so I wanted to make sure I was making a, a calculated risk about going out to dinner alone that night. 
Um, long story short, I sat in a restaurant alone and there were a group of white men sitting at a table and all three of them kept looking over in my direction and then talking to each other and then looking over in my direction and talking to each other and my first assumption was, oh my God, they're going to say something to me because I'm colored or mixed from, you know, and maybe I'm not supposed to be in this restaurant, apartheid, you know, just recently ended, maybe I'm going to be in trouble in some way and I, I could feel myself reacting immediately without even knowing all the information. And at one point, I decided I'm just going to hurry and finish this meal and then uh, get the heck out of here. So as I was finishing my meal, one of the men walked up and um, stood at the end of my table. And I looked up at him and I braced myself for whatever he was going to say and was really nervous. And I could feel my heart pounding and I could feel, um, I could feel tension in my body. And I looked up at him and he said, hey, and I said, hi, and he said, aha, I was right. And he turned to the other guys at the table and he said, yep, she's American. And I sat there looking up at him and he said, how you doing? And I said, I'm fine. He said, oh no, we were, we were looking over in your direction because you just looked American, some of your clothes, and um, I saw you looking at the guidebook and I assumed that you were just here on, on vacation. What do you hear? And he struck up a conversation with me. And I ended up sitting with the three of them having this, this great conversation, talking about rugby, talking about soccer, and um, you know some politics and music, and had a really fun evening with them. And you know a, a lot of discussion around um, racism and discrimination can be focused on how uh, people of color, like myself, um, are on the receiving end of it. And, um, and it's, it's people maybe from the majority culture, people who are white that are doing, making the assumptions, which can be true, but it can work on both sides. So as a, an educator and a cross-cultural trainer, um, I also have to keep myself in check because you, if I think of you know, life being a university, my job is not to make snap judgments and make assumptions about people who are different from me and automatically assume that they're thinking the worst of me. And if I approach situations with an open mind and an open heart, I can often have wonderful experiences I never would have had. And to this day, that was 1997, I'm still in touch with Mark, one of the, the guys I made friends with um, in that restaurant. And we, you know, we send emails a few times a year and check in. And um, it's a good memory and it's a good life lesson for me. So I leave you with a reminder that we don't necessarily know the full story. It's always helpful for us to continue to dig a bit deeper and find out by engaging, you know, find out information by engaging with people, by researching information and doing a bit more investigating. And if you operate from a place of curiosity versus judgment, it goes a, it goes a long way. So I have one recommendation for you because I am thinking about Nelson Mandela today. My recommendation for you would be to go to Amazon or any, any um, site and get the book um, by Nelson Mandela, A Long Walk Home, because it's a beautiful story. It's beautifully written, and it gives you, it gives you inspiration, and it, it gives you information about what, what a remarkable man Nelson Mandela is, and what a remarkable country South Africa is. And um, it's a reminder that any situation, any environment, any community can be rebuilt. And if people can look to the future versus feeling the pain of the past and living in that space, um, anything's possible. So please subscribe to Equality TV. They're doing incredible work. It's an opportunity, a platform, a space for people with all different perspectives, life experiences, and voices. And it's off, they're offering an incredible opportunity for people to get connected to one another, learn about different communities and cultures, and have a voice. So I wish you all the best. Please uh, like this video and look forward to speaking with you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.